When water vapor condenses on a sailing forming a film of liquid, or when we spread a layer of paint which is too thick, we often observe the formation of drops hanging from the horizontal surface. Here is a more controlled version of this phenomenon. We coat a glass plate with a layer of oil 200 microns thick, a thousand times more viscous than water, and flip the plate upside down. We see that the film, initially flat, develops bumps within a few minutes that are very regularly spaced at a distance on the order of 2 cm. In order to get uniform painted surfaces, it is absolutely necessary that the drying time of the paint remains small compared to the time it takes for the layer to destabilize. When you paint a ceiling, you don't want uh, the paint to fall on the floor. And uh, if you don't pay attention, this will happen. And so the question we want to address is how does a thin layer destabilize? So the situation is to paint a ceiling. So we draw the ceiling here and we call H0 the thickness of the paint that we deposit on the ceiling. And what we are going to discuss is the stability of this uh, layer of liquid and more precisely we are going to consider what will happen to a perturbation. The perturbation is characterized by the amplitude of the wave and by the wavelength here that I call lambda which is 2 pi over k the wave number. To discuss the stability of this layer we are going to uh, discuss the pressure in three different points. So one is at the bottom here, and I call it A. One is here at the top of the wave, and I call it B. And the last one is at the same level as B, and just above A, and I call it C. The idea is to discuss the difference of pressure between B and C. Because if the pressure in B is larger than C, you expect the bulge to empty like this and the situation to be unstable. On the contrary, if the pressure in C is larger than the pressure in B, you expect the liquid to, mo to move towards B and the, uh, ceiling, the painting to be stable. And so the whole discussion is to determine the difference of pressure between C and B. Right? So we do it the following way. We first start by the pressure in B. So the pressure in B is equal to the pressure in the room that I call P0. So this is P0. And then, uh, since I cross a liquid interface, there will be a Laplace uh, pressure jump. In this case, the pressure in the liquid will be smaller than the pressure outside due to uh, the sign of the curvature. And so you will have minus gamma, the surface tension, times the curvature of the interface, which goes like A, K square. So A, the amplitude of the perturbation, and K, the wave number. So we have the pressure in B. Now we move to the pressure in C. So the pressure in C goes like the pressure in A, minus 2 rho G A. So this is an hydrostatic term that says that uh, to go from A to C, you have to move a distance which is twice the amplitude A. And now you, you are missing the pressure in A, so which is the outer pressure, plus gamma AK square, which is the Laplace pressure jump. Now the pressure in the liquid is larger than the pressure outside in this region, and minus twice rho GA. And so we have expressed the pressure in B and the pressure in C. Now we can compare them by looking at the difference. So P, B minus P, C. And this difference goes like twice rho G, A times 1 minus the capillary length times K square. And this is our result that needs now to be discussed. So what we have obtained is that the pressure in B minus 
the pressure in C goes like 2 rho GA times 1 minus LC times K square. And we need now to discuss this expression. So the discussion goes as follows. If PB minus PC is larger than zero, is positive, so which means that LC times K is smaller than one, then the liquid will move from B to C. So we expect a liquid motion that goes like this. And in this case, the, uh, you will fill the part of liquid that, are, that have started to fall. And so you will continue to fall. So this is an unstable situation. So this instability is always observed when this condition is fulfilled, which means then if you have wavelength larger than 2 pi times the capillary length, which is of the order of 2 centimeters, then you will have the painting that you have deposited on the ceiling that will fall in drops. The other situation is if Pb minus Pc is smaller than zero, which is when Lc times K becomes larger than 1, then you will have the opposite, so Pb will be smaller than Pc, and the liquid will move from C to B, and the drop that have started to fall will move up, and so the uh, layer will remain stable. So here you will have a stable situation. And this stable situation occurs well, when you have lambda, which is smaller than 2 pi Lc. So the conclusion is that if you have a ceiling which is larger than 2 centimeters, which is uh, always the case in a room, you expect to have an unstable situation, right? The point is that it will take some time to move from this uh, initial deposition of the painting to this unstable uh, deformation of the layer that you have deposited. And so the next step of our discussion is to discuss the time it takes to become unstable. So the last question we need to uh, address in order to answer the question about the stability of the layer of paint that we have deposited on the ceiling is the time it takes to uh, observe the instability. So I call the time it takes to, to I, the time it takes to move from this situation where we have deposited a uniform layer of thickness H0 to the one where we see the instability appearing. Right? And so uh, for instabilities, what we uh, show is that the amplitude of the wave will grow exponentially in time depending on the initial perturbation H0, H A0 that always exists on a on a layer, for example, when you take the brush, it's not initially completely uniform. There are always some uh, little waviness. And if you are in an unstable situation, you expect this waviness to grow exponentially in time. Following the law, uh, A of t will go like A0 exponential of t divided by 2i. The uh, study of the instability shows that 2i depends on the wave number through the following behavior. So you have negative to i, which means a stable situation when k is sufficiently large. And we have shown previously that this is the limit where k becomes larger than 1 over Lc. So in this situation, we are in a stable situation, so when the pressure in B becomes smaller than the pressure in C. And what the study of the instability tells you is that there is a prefer K, so one which has the larger growth rate, so this prefer uh, wave number goes like 1 divided by the square root of 2, 1 over LC. And 
the growth rate associated to this prefer mode goes like 1 over to i, which is a function of surface tension times the thickness of the layer to the cube divided by the viscosity times the capillary length to the 4. And so what this uh, expression tells you is that the thinner the layer, the smaller the growth rate. So you have interest to deposit a thin layer in order to have a long time to go from this situation to this situation. And the whole trick of the painting will have a drying time which will be smaller than to I. So if you manage to take a paint with a drying time which is smaller than the time it takes for the layer to destabilize, then you will never observe the instability and you will have a uniform painting layer at the surface of the ceiling. Right? So what is very important for a paint is to compare this characteristic time of the instability that depends on the thickness and on the viscous property of the paint and on the surface tension and also on, the cap on its capillary length. But the whole trick is to take a drying time which is smaller than the time it takes for the layer to destabilize. The fact that surfaces have the ability to retain dense matter is observed by placing thin plates of copper at the surface of a bath of water. Seen from above and using a grid at the bottom of the bath to visualize the deformations at the interface, we observe that copper, nine times denser than water, can float. Water pins and deforms at the copper edges and the deformation takes place at a large scale, a few times the capillary length, about one centimeter around the plate. As a consequence, a second plate gets attracted by the first one if placed not too far from it. This is a subtle effect for which attraction can be seen as a result of the merging of overlapping menisci which minimizes the water surface area. Dense floating objects were discovered by Galileo, but there is still ongoing research on this topic. A boat floats whereas a submarine sinks. This is a classical problem of hydrostatic and we are going to come back on this problem in the following way. So this is the question we want to address. Who floats and who sinks? And we first start with the classical problem of the boat flotation. So for a large boat at the surface of the sea, so this is the large boat and this is the sea, you have a condition to fulfill is that uh, the weight of the boat that goes like the density of the boat times the volume of the boat times gravity has to be compensated by buoyancy that goes like the density of the water times omega times g. And so if the condition to float if the weight, so uh, the density times omega times g, is smaller than buoyancy, which is much like this. And so the conclusion that you uh, get from uh, this uh, inequality is that the condition for floating is that the density of the boat must be smaller than the density of the water. And so the conclusion of this is that only a solid that has a density smaller than the density of uh, water can float at the surface of the water. So this is true for large boats. What we are going to uh, uh, underline is that this conclusion is wrong if we move to small boats, right? And this was shown in the movie. So the second part is for small boats and in the case of small boats what we are going to observe is that the interface is deformed so this is 
small boat of spherical shape, let's say. And for this boat, we will have uh, added to uh, the weight that goes like the density time r cube time g. We will have two forces, so uh, we will have always the buoyancy that goes like uh, the density of the water time r cube time g plus the capillary forces that goes like the surface tension times the size of the particle. And so the condition we are going to uh, satisfy in order to fulfill flotation is the following. So the weight must be smaller in order to float. So this is Then the sum of the uh, forces, that is buoyancy, as before, plus capillary forces that are related to the deformation of the interface. And so now, the condition that we get for the condition of flotability is that uh, the density ratio, so rho s divided by rho, must be smaller than 1 plus the capillary length divided by the size of the particle square. So this is what we find for the condition of flotation. So the two comments we can uh, make with this formula are the following. So if the size of the particle is much larger than the capillary length, then this formula tells you that you recover the previous analysis, which is you will float if the density of the solid divided by the density of the water is smaller than one, which is that the mean density of the solid must be smaller than the density of the water to float. But if the size becomes smaller than the capillary length, which is of the order of three millimeters, then what you observe is that uh, rho s over rho has to be smaller than something which is large. So uh, Lc over R, this one becomes larger than 1. And so you can float even if the density of the solid becomes larger than the density of the water. right? And so this is a property of a small objects. So uh, even with large density, you can make small objects float using this capillary effect. So to summarize, what we have seen is that for a large boats they can float if the density, the mean density of the boat is smaller than the density of the water. So this is density of the boat, mean density of the water. And for small boats, due to the interface deformation, they can float if rho s of a rho is smaller than 1 plus the capillary length divided by the size square. So the transition between uh, these uh, two limits uh, arrives at the capillary length. So when you are larger than the capillary length, you can only float if your mean density is smaller than the density of water. If you are smaller than the capillary length, then you can still float even if your density is larger than the density of the water, thanks to the capillary forces. What we just uh, saw is that uh, small, small floating boats can have a density larger than the density of water. In fact, those small boats have uh, another property which can be uh, interesting for self-assembly, is that once placed at the interface, they attract each other. And this is the second point that I would like to discuss now. In order to understand this attraction of small boats, we are going to uh, draw two different uh, cartoons so the first one is to uh, place two small boats 
So small meaning that the size R is smaller than the capillary length, so three millimeters in the case of water. And uh, sketch the deformation of the interface. So for the first particle, we have one meniscus, two meniscus. For the second one, we have another meniscus here, and a last meniscus there. So this is the shape of two particles, two small boats, at a water interface. And now we do the same drawing if they come together. So if they come together, we still have meniscus number one, we still have meniscus number four, but menisci two and three have disappeared. And so when we look at the uh, energy associated to the uh, interface deformation, we can call it E1 for the first case, and uh, if we look at the energy of the interface deformation in the second case, then it goes like E1 minus the disparition of the two menisci, which is gamma times the surface associated to meniscus number two and meniscus number three. And uh, this means that E2 is smaller than E1. If this energy state has uh, a lower energy than this one, we expect the particle to move from this state to, the, uh, to this one. And so the origin of the physical attraction is the lowering of the interface energy. The question is of which distance this interaction takes place. And the answer is for millimetric particles, so particles smaller than the capillary length, it can go up to centimeter. So it doesn't go to the meter, but it, goes, it can go to several centimeters. Climbing a liquid surface without any kind of swimming device seems to be an impossible task. This insect larva, however, is up to the challenge and manages to reach the edge of the tank by arching its back and creating a water meniscus around her. Like the copper plates we have seen before, the larva and the solid wall attract each other through the interaction of their respective menisci.